Hello and welcome to the show. Now, I was lucky enough to be invited to have a go with the new grid game. I got to spend an hour pretty much with the whole thing. Could play whichever parts that I wanted to. Now, we were playing with a completed game, if you like, with all the cars unlocked. This is a look at the career mode. You'll start off in the first tier, the touring car tier, work your way through. You have enough money, I think, to buy a car to start off that event. You'll work your way through, gradually go down the list of events. There are special invitational events and so on. There's a lot of races to do here. You'll notice some of these as well. There are some that are a single round. Some of these are up to four rounds, as long as I as long as I saw. So, career mode-wise, plenty of races to be getting on with, and of course, an awful lot of different categories. The first race I was going to jump into here was using the, what's called, uh, GT Group 2, I think, on the game. It's essentially your GT4 cars. Now, I was initially, well, I was planning on driving the 911. I was going to have a quick look through the paints. Basically, you can, while it's not a full livery editor, you can kind of change the, the base paints of the car. You can change, I think, the colours of the, 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 the decals, and you know, I'll unlock more of these as you go through. I meant to run the Porsche, when I backed out of the livery editor thing, I expected it to still be on the Porsche, and I just pressed A, which meant I ended up being put in the 350Z. Not that I'm going to complain about having the 350Z, however, not the, not the cleverest decision by me, but either way, we were driving these GT4 cars. The circuit for this race would be the new Havana track street circuit, which... I was never sure, you're never sure with these kind of fictional street circuits if they're going to be good for racing as such. I like this one. This one suits my driving style. Um, it's fast, it's a bit bumpy in places, uh, some, some interesting chicanes. It is, thankfully, as far as street circuits go, relatively wide, which gives me hope that for kind of normal, I'd say normal racing, um, sort of like online races, wheel to wheel racing, should be pretty, pretty decent. We are at the full sunset, uh, which is. A couple of quarters were quite blinding. There's various times of day, there's various weathers as well uh, that the circuits can be set in. Just so happened that this career race is done at sunset, which, while pretty, at times makes it quite difficult to see where you are going. But in general, this game is fantastic looking. Very, very, very nice looking game, very detailed uh, game. Um, the sounds are actually also really good with the, with the vehicles, especially with some of the time attack cars where you hear a lot of the popping and banging going on as you're trying to sort of lift off the throttle and, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, game looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is a very uh, very pretty, kind of very detailed little venue to, uh, to go racing around. Let's start with car physics, handling physics. Very important part of a racing game. Uh, now this, of course, is, I say, a little bit more of an arcade racing game. It's certainly by no means, by no means a tap, break to drift sort of arcade game, but it's also not a, not a sim racer. The handling reminds me of the first grid. If you're familiar with that game, you're probably going to be fairly familiar with, with this. It does take a little bit of getting used to. There is no doubt about that. The first time you jump into this, it is a little bit different handling. The cars are very grippy. They have a little grip. They... I kind of feel like they have a lot of turn. They rotate quite a lot into the corners, um, which I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. You will get used to the handling. It is just different to other racing games that you might have played. And I will say they can get very snappy. While these kind of cars are not too bad, the faster the cars go, I say faster the cars go, the snappier they can get. If you step out of line, it can be very, very difficult to catch them in time. You've got to be very quick. Uh, to catch them. Now I am driving this with all the assists turned off, of course. You can have stability control, traction control, and so on to help you with that. But to, yeah, you turn them all off if you do get things a smidge wrong, and you can get them a lot... Uh, so you can get them a wrong a lot easier on a track like this, where there's lots of bumps and lots of curbs, you can get in trouble. The cars can suddenly snap. Uh, it's, a, well, it's, different, it's different driving physics. It's going to be something to get used to as I have a very big brown trouser moment. The AI were quite slow. A lot of AIs were battling one another there and they kind of all checked up and I was committed and I was very much at the limit of the brakes in my car but we just about managed to make that one well, survive. We actually got the pass done in the end as well. Um, but yeah. Handling physics is is good. It's a little bit different as I go for maximum bravery between the Nissan and the tyre bundle. There was not much more room for any of that whatsoever, but we made it, we made it work. Uh, Difficulty-wise, I'm currently playing this on 
well, I was playing this with the hard difficulty, which is the second highest. There was one difficulty up. I probably should have put it up to very hard, in all honesty. Um, the, I don't know whether the AIs are faster with different cars. A couple of categories I struggled a little bit with uh, on this difficulty, but I think that was more me being a Muppet with the car rather than the AI being slow. Now, this sort of car I'm kind of used to. This is the sort of speed this is yeah kind of where I am at in terms of in terms of the cars I tend to race it's kind of the, the higher end almost of the cars I like to race I'm more of a touring car Clio Cup uh, car sort of a driver um, but yeah probably stick the difficulty up a, a, a touch the AI are good to race against but yeah certainly part of this it wasn't uh, wasn't too bad to go racing with now you would have noticed as I was going past that orange Nissan we do have a uh, damage on this one. The well, Codemasters games, the grid games in general, have been very good uh, with damage having probably some of the more extreme damage certainly for a game with licensed cars. Now, I there is terminal damage in this. Uh, I haven't seen it happen to a vehicle but you can choose to turn uh, terminal damage on uh, which means, well, you can wreck out of a race entirely. Uh, I did put damage on full on. I had terminal damage turned on. I haven't seen really mechanical damage. Now, I don't know whether I just haven't hit the cars hard enough. I wasn't testing the crashing particularly. And this race itself actually turned out to be fairly clean for a street circuit. Uh, I have seen races um, where bits of bodywork are flying off of everything. So you saw the Nissan with a flappy rear bumper. Uh, that can happen to your car. Bonnets can come up. Bonnets can come flying off. I've seen a couple of cars with bonnets stuck upwards. Uh, and if you're driving from cockpit view, you would actually not be able to see a damn thing. Um, yeah, actual mechanical damage, engines losing pa power and so on, I haven't really seen around around the place. There is an interesting element to the damage, though, uh, as we head around this final lap of the career, career race. You will have to pay for the damage. So if you abuse your car, if you batter the car up over the course of a race, at the end, you will have to pay for repair. Oh, there's a costs section. If you like, you'll get prize money for the race. Your teammate uh, will get prize money for the race, but you'll have to pay for repairs. Now, as far as I have seen so far, it doesn't really look like it's going to be a bankrupting level of cost. But also, I don't know how much, if you do terminal damage to the car, how much that is going to cost, because I, I never really did more than a sort of little bumps and little scrapes along the way. I, mean, I got through this race with very little in terms of instance. I also don't know whether if your teammate gets wrecked out of the race, they can, they can crash out. I have, have I say, I have heard the um, kind of like uh, race engineer chap uh, telling you your teammate's out of the race or someone else is out of the race. So they can crash out of the race. I don't know whether that affects the thing. As we cross the finish line here, you'll see you've got race earnings, teammate earnings and costs. Uh, so it might be more of a case of rather than you going bankrupt, it might be a case of if you want to maximise your profits, you're going to want to avoid it. It's just that little incentive to not be a Muppet. Little incentive not to get involved in bumps and shunts. We move next to something very, very different, and the game has got a very good selection of race series. While it might not have every single car from every single series, or every single car from the series it has, it does have a very large number of series with plenty of interesting vehicles to go racing. I mean, we've got these... Essentially, they're the NASCAR trucks, but they... Aren't, I think they aren't branded as such. They're called Dumont something. It's Dumont Type 37, I think it's called. Uh, either way, big V8, rear wheel drive, slides about. Very, very different to driving the GT4 cars here. Now, these are a little bit more forgiving. If you get sideways in these, these tend not to snap. They get sideways easy, and you lose a lot of time if you are going sideways, but they don't quite snap as viciously as some of the race cars that we that I had been driving. Uh, I get into the door slightly of the vehicle ahead a little bit of a little bit of slide. I mean these are much bigger, much heavier, uh, much I say much more difficult to relative speaking terms, more difficult to get through the corners, can be a little bit uncooperative. Now this race was a good example of the the AIs. Now the AIs are great fun to go racing against because they drive a little bit a little bit more like people. Essentially they will make mistakes. Not necessarily huge massive crashes, but you see the two trucks up ahead are going side by side towards turn two. They just get connected. A little bit. The truck on the inside has its rear quarter panel stuck on the front of the other vehicle. They both end up going off at turn two. A bit of a Vettel style rejoin going on there, but uh, either way, and this through the next corner, it's on a slightly tight line, it ends up sort of sliding through. It's sort of a little bit more natural racing. It's actually very good fun to be a part of. The mistakes aren't common enough. You see them absolutely every single race, but they will happen. You know, you're not going to be guaranteed three or four places from AIs falling off the circuit, but there will be mistakes happening. And the AI race each other 
very well, which is something often you get AIs that race a player well, but they kind of sit in a train a little bit on their own. The AIs are battling one another, that's how some of these mistakes are made. Unfortunately, I goof up through the next corner and squeeze my teammate a little bit too much. Yeah, not my finest driving moment. I just should have left more space. We we're trying to work our way up through the order and came down a little, a little too far on that one. I was kind of, I was hoping they were going to yield. The AI are robust in their driving. Fair. I didn't have any big torpedoes from them, but they will, they will put up a fight. And that's kind of what you want. Yeah, I took too many liberties on that one. And it is also. You saw it a little bit. It was more sort of nudge the door and get sideways with these trucks. Uh, you are not going to want to do half assed overtaking attempts. The chances are you're going to come off worst if you try that. If you have that sort of just about ish alongside, throw the vehicle up the inside. It's quite easy to spin yourself out on the side of somebody else. And now, with a bit of clean air for this final lap, I was hoping to try and maybe sneak up some positions as vehicles ahead for one another. I got a little cheeky in the final corner, trying to do something. We have a little bit of sneak. Three trucks end up in the wall uh, on the outside. At least three trucks end up in the wall, actually. I don't know if anybody further up uh, clonked the wall. Um, yeah, it wasn't a great race for me. Was, was was not a great race for me in the slightest there, but that's how it goes. That's how it goes sometimes. Fun, A fun vehicle to drive. I got fastest lap. About the only crumb of comfort in that particular one. So we'd had a go with GT4, had a go with the trucks, was then back to having a flick through of all of these. I was looking for something, just for the sake of this, I said we only had an hour to play the game, so I was trying to find something that was uh, just one just one round. Didn't quite fancy going for the full prototype cars just yet, so instead went for the... It's GT Group 1, these essentially GT3 slash GTE cars. I don't quite know where the definition falls with these, so uh, yeah, there might be there's 911 RSR, there's Corvette in there, the Viper's in there, a Ford GT is in there for example, I think there's sort of, perhaps a little bit of working around getting the cars into, into classes I haven't had a chance to fully see how if there's, you know, one particularly OP car in a certain class or not, didn't have time to, to go and find that out certainly felt competitive with everything that I drove in the different categories and now this race was a night race. You may well recognise this circuit from the first grid game. I'm pretty sure that's, that was where it was from. It might be a slight variation of the layout, but I certainly remember bits of this circuit uh, from the first grid game. I ended up giving my teammate a little bit of a, uh, a hurry-up bump, shall we say, coming up the hill. Now this is a far, again, another quite fast circuit. A little bit more of a conventional track. Again, well, it is a fictional layout. I just realised we happen to have done... I think all fictional circuits while I was on the career mode it was just the stuff that I was selecting while going through. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit more of a challenge circuit, perhaps a circuit that the GT cars are not as, um, ex I say, not not as common to see these kind of cars race around this. This is more sort of for your tuner modified cars rather than outright GT cars. I got a little bit sneaky, and this is what I was saying in that previous race. You're going to have to pick and choose your moments for getting overtakes. That was a real half assed chance. I was trying to be sneaky, trying to be a little bit speculative in uh, getting up the inside and it didn't it didn't work and I came off an awful lot worse we have a big dive up the inside now on the subject of AIs there are some important things to note and quite a lot of this video actually we talk about the AIs because they are very interesting to race with so you have a nemesis system you might have seen it a little bit in that first race I bumped a truck and it gave me a nemesis but I never really saw them again uh, my teammate here for example I give a nudge to unintentionally uh, I just didn't quite get my braking right, put them in a wall, and that, that, that then makes them my nemesis. What that means is, should I end up behind them again, or should they end up directly behind me, they are not going to play nicely. They don't want to let you pass. They will defend as aggressively as they possibly can. They'll be more aggressive with trying to overtake you. So you've got to be careful with them. You can get stuck behind them for a long period of a race if you get unlucky. Now, I have gone past my teammate at this stage, and Nemesis Driver is a little bit further back. I didn't mean to put my teammate in a wall, but, you know, that's that's just how it goes sometimes. So we come up to actually a very, very big group of cars. Now, in this particular race, we have a very large group of cars kind of stuck fighting one another. I think a couple of cars vanished off at the front. Uh, somehow, that's just how it happens in motorsport, because the AI are busy fighting one another. I then immediately get too greedy through the next corner, trying to make up some time, having had a bad start to this, and do the same thing again. These half-assed passes, you've got to be careful with, because you will get in a spot of bother with them. 
going sideways. That's how I actually saved the spin, but we've lost a heap of time, and now I've got to try and get back into the fight again. So helped by the AI busy fighting one another. Uh, the other thing with the AI, I know we've got this Nemesis system, the AIs have all got their own driver profiles, essentially. What that means to you playing the game is some AI drivers are a lot more aggressive than others, and that will be linked to a name. So you may well come to recognise an AI. Also, there's a spin for one of the 911s. There's a jump on the brakes, I ended up giving my teammate a little bit more of a boop through there. I don't know. I don't even know whether they did that on their own or were turned by somebody, but it's coming over a crest and suddenly there's a spun car and everyone dives on the brakes to try and avoid it. Um, yeah, the AIs have their own, their own profiles. Some are very difficult to overtake. I've found that to an extent in these first ones. Probably have up the difficulty a little bit, um, as it is, I'm probably a bit faster than the AIs, so their defending isn't too effective. But uh, we saw it at the Havana race, for example, there was an Aston that was quite aggressive with defending. Uh, I say aggressive, like, fairly? Like, they move across to the inside if you are close enough behind them to, to take that line away from you. They will... They'll give you... On the most part, they'll give you racing space. The only times I had crashes with the AI, either I outbraked myself, or I was, you know, a little too brave on the inside. For example, here, against my teammate, even though it's on the Nemesis thing, it still gave me enough space to have a car there. I just wasn't quite able to make a pass stick. In the end, we get to the inside over a crest of the Ford to get the pass done. We're still in this big group. The leaders are gone at this stage. We're not, we're not going to be fighting for the lead. Now, that's fine for me, because we're still having fun. We might only be fighting over, I think, about 8th place and back here. We might only be fighting over 8th place and back, but it's a more fun race than looping around in 2nd place, not really having anything to do. Corvette ran out wide to the final corner. You can see up ahead the um, two... Uh, the Viper and the Corvette, sorry, a busy battling position. They're almost going side by side, 3 wide into turn 1 with an Aston. We sneak up the inside, get a couple of cars. This time we're far enough alongside that I don't do something stupid, which is always helpful. Uh, my teammates gone to the back of the field and all this. There's a lot of positional changes going on here. There's an awful lot of positional changes uh, going on. The Viper still having a look for a way past the Aston. I've got a good run, but it's just difficult to get a pass. We give the Viper a little bit of a nudge. Doesn't quite work. Viper's fighting. I'm on such a tight line through here. We get connected uh, with, uh, <laughs> with Dodge. That then means we gain one position, promptly lose another. It's Ferrari and Corvette lining up behind us if we do anything stupid at this point. Thanks for exciting racing. Yeah, it makes for some very, very good racing, even when you are fighting over, you know, some positions loosely inside the top 10. You can still have a very fun race. See, I've been managing to sneak up the inside uh, of some of the slower vehicles in this field, but as I caught up to these guys, they were taking a much, a much different line. They actually covered that inside. I couldn't just duck underneath as I had been doing to everybody else. Corvette tries to get alongside at a really fast point. Bit dangerous. We all have to kind of back out of it. Corvette kind of forces his way past a little bit, opens the door for me. I then get a clonk off the back of the Corvette and we get swamped by it. All the hard work gets immediately undone. Uh, my teammate is at least not last anymore. You see the cars behind moving around. It's just, there's a lot of action going on in these races and that's what you want. You want to have exciting single-player races. It's nice to have a career mode where the AI are going to put up a fight, where the AI are going to, I say make life difficult for you, but are going to race you. It's just more fun. I got a little bit greedy on the inside, ended up going for a spin around again, this time on the inside of the Aston. Well, I tried to get past the Ferrari and found the door of the Aston. Uh, remember, there was a rewind. There is a rewind function. Now, if you don't like this, you can turn it all off. As with most of the assists and settings and whatnot, you can adjust it, you can set it however you like. So if you don't want to be able to use a rewind, there's no punishment for using rewinds, although you do have a limited number this time, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. I think you can get... I think I've got five turn on. I think you can change the number you have. Um, a lot of games, actually, have just gone for unlimited rewinds now. Just do whatever the hell you like. But uh, there is a limited number. You can turn them off if you so wish. Uh, we're going to fly our way into the final quarter, but I'm not close enough to do anything. Uh, in the end, I think the Aston might outdrag the Corvette to the finish line. We have to settle for a ninth in a very spectacular race, though. You know, that was... Uh, <laughs> A very, very exciting race over a ninth position. A long way off the top lot, but I had fun. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I thoroughly enjoy my time with these with these races. Yeah, turn the difficulty up a little bit would be probably good for me here. But there are plenty of settings for however you would like to play the game. And there's a lot of races to go through. And the races are fun. You know, they, they are fun races to have to, I say to have to, but fun races to work your way through in, in single player, which is really nice. Really nice to see. I'm, I'm impressed. 
I am I am thoroughly impressed. I really enjoyed my time playing the career mode. I'm liking the way the AI are. A car, like the collisions between the cars means you can get away with a little bit of rubbing, but if you're too much of an idiot, you are going to come off. Uh, you are going to come off worst. So there we go. A brief look at the new grid career mode. That is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.